Nick wants to know if looking at the tax returns of a small business is a great way to find out if it's a business worth buying. Hey there, everyone. It's uh, David Barnett from davidcbarnett.com, the blog site, YouTube channel, iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon podcast, where I talk about buying, selling, financing, small and medium-sized businesses. Today, we're going to be talking about tax returns. So let me let me read Nick's question. And look at look at look at the great job that I, look what I'm working. I'm working from now. I'm obviously, Yat Long did this, not me. So um, this is Nick's question. David, if I wanted to buy a business, could I look at a tax return and judge whether it is a good business to buy or not? Is there something on a business tax return I can read to understand if the company's making money? Now, it is a general question, and, and that's great because there's a lot of new viewers on the channel, and I wanted to address this one. So Nick does mention a specific country that where he lives, but it doesn't really matter. My comments are kind of general. And so let's think about reporting and the work that a, a business does to represent its activity. So every business has to have a tax return um, because businesses are, are paying taxes, right? In most countries of the world. So that tax return has to be processed over at the government office somewhere, and they're processing millions of tax returns. And so the tax form, the what information you have to put on the return, is not oriented towards helping someone make a decision about the company. All of the things they want filled in on that form are for helping the tax collectors execute their role in collecting taxes, right? Makes sense. And so here's what you will notice if you were to sit down and look at a company's tax return versus a set of accountant prepared financials is on the tax return, things are highly simplified. So they use general categories, for example, for balance sheet information, um, big total numbers. They don't break it down very much. Um, for the income statement or P&L items, there are certain key items that they want broken out by line. And then, for example, on American tax returns, anything else just gets included as a schedule, which is just like a blank page completed by whoever files a tax return to break down all those other little categories of expenses that make up the other category on the government's lines. So it's, it's very simplified. And if you look at the CPA prepared financial statements, you'll see a lot more detail. Why? Well, the accountants in their practice, you know, in, in their, the way that they're trained is they're preparing financial statements for owners and directors to understand what is happening in the business. So the audience that the CPA uh, financial statements are for is for a different group. Now, as a buyer of a business, those financial statements might do a better job of giving you the information you're looking for as long as you understand how to read them. And the first thing that you want to read when you're reading a set of financial statements is at the very beginning, which is the accountant's letter to the reader, right? because the accountant is gonna say who the intended audience is and to what degree of effort they've put into preparing the financial statements. Financial statements from accountants generally come in three different flavors. The first is the compilation or notice to reader version. There's different names for this around the world. Basically, the accountant has been paid money to take the management's internal financials and make them look like a financial statement. That's it. So. The accountant will take the information and maybe they have some questions about how things are categorized, but they're not looking into the books of the company. They're just taking the numbers, making it look like a financial statement. And there you go, right? So, so you can't really trust that the accountant or the accountant's reputation has validated the numbers that you're seeing in any way because they haven't done any poking or looking into the company. The second level is what's called a uh, review engagement uh, sort of level of financial statements. And again, there's different terms around the world, but if you read the letter, it will say that the accountant has investigated certain key aspects of the business. And so the accountant maybe has prepared the financials, then they've looked at different ratios or they've thought, you know what, this doesn't seem to make sense. Let's look into that. And they've verified certain key things in the business. Now, a business of a certain size who has bank loans, for example, that are real business loans to the business, the bank may be requiring them to have review engagement reports. 
And this is why you will see this level of accounting or financial reporting available in that particular business. The th and, and it costs a lot more money. So the, re the notice to reader statements might cost $1,000. The review engagement might be several thousand, might be five or $6,000, depending on the amount of work that the accountant firm has to do. The topmost level of financial statement are the audited financial statement. And the audited means that the accountant is putting their reputation on the line to a certain degree, claiming that what's represented on those pieces of paper is an accurate representation of what went on in the business. These are very expensive. So, you know, agencies of government, government owned companies, uh, publicly traded companies, these people are going to have audited financials and they're going to spend tens of thousands of dollars for accountants to come in and dig through files and records and books to make sure that what's in the financial statements is accurate and tells the real story of what's going on. And so one of the ways that you can often tell if a business buyer doesn't really have much experience is when they start demanding audited financial statements of regular mom and pop main street businesses, because I've never in my life seen them. Um, sometimes uh, charities, for example, are required by law to have audited financial statements. My sister is a director of a charity that has to do with animals and they are required to have audited financial statements. How on earth can they afford them? Well, they go looking for a CPA that's sympathetic to their cause who does this for them as a way of giving and donating to the charity because otherwise they would never be able to afford it. And so the financial statements, you know, you need to know which level you're looking at. So it's either the, the company's internal, you know, QuickBooks printout or their Sage 50 printout, you know, that's sort of one degree. Uh, maybe the bookkeeper knows what they're doing. Maybe they don't. If it's the business owner or some employee doing it, you have to be aware of what you're looking at. The next level up might be the tax return, but if the accountant was simply hired or tax preparer was simply hired to take numbers from the internal statements, put them in the tax return, it can be full of errors too, right? And then the review engagement one as well can be full of errors because it's just the management's numbers put together to look like a financial statement. When you look at a business, none of these tools is going to give you the answers that you're looking for, but we have to start somewhere. And so we start with the best available set of numbers that we can have. We make an offer or make a deal based on those. And then we have to go through the process of validating that the numbers we're looking at are actually correct. And I've been involved in many cases where once we started to look under the hood, we've found all kinds of problems with what numbers were being represented to us. And it's not typically a case where someone was trying to defraud a buyer or pull one over on someone. It's usually related to people who just don't know what they're doing. And in some cases, people have actually ended up paying far more in taxes than they ever should because they weren't keeping proper books. Anyway, great question, Nick. Thank you very much. And so just so that all of you are aware, are aware there's no magic number on, on any kind of government tax return that's going to tell you if a business really makes money or not. It all depends on where the numbers come from and how the numbers were created. And most importantly, how the business owner runs a business and are they doing different things to try to make their profit lower, for example, to reduce taxes, or are they trying to make as fair and honest a representation as they can of what's going on in the business? This whole question of how we take the, the, the numbers we're given and, and go through and analyze them, it's called normalization or recasting. And there's a big section about that in uh, my online course, Business Buyer Advantage. So if you, if you want to get into this and you want to really have an idea of what you're doing, I highly recommend that you enroll in Business Buyer Advantage over at businessbuyeradvantage.com. Thanks. Great question. And uh, we'll see you soon. I love you all very much. Hope you're making it through winter. Okay. Cheers.